Okay, we are recording. Okay, we'll call the meeting for May 13th, 2021 to order at seven, oh shoot, seven o'clock. Okay. All right, I will take roll call. Gonzalez? Here. Mesa Jack is not. Fun zone, not yet. Pelletier here. Puzo? Here. Swanson? You said no. Jost? Here. Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, um, pushing forward. Uh, I would ask the board or uh, Joanne if we can move um, the presentation of the annual audit to the start of the meeting so that Brian can do that and then get out and enjoy the rest of his evening. Um, yeah. If we could do that. That would make sense. Okay. Okay, Brian, all yours. <laughs> all right. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, on behalf of SICK, I'd like to thank the board for inviting us to present the Report resulting from the audit of the library for your year ended December 31st, 2020. And uh, the board does have um, electronic copy of the okay. documents, Brian, but they don't have hard copy. So perfect. Might take them a little bit to go back and forth, but depending on what you're looking at. No problem. Um, so if you start with the, I'm trying to pull up my electronic copy here as well. If you go to the um, electronic copy of the annual financial report, that's where we want to start. And if you kept the same file name, if you kept the set, same file names as what was sent over in the PDF, it'd say 20 CYO final audit dash Morton, Morton Grove Library. If one or, two, one or two of you want to tell me, yeah, we got it. What I'll page wait for, is it? I'll, I'll yeah. wait for your cue. What's that? He's, he hasn't started yet, Carlotta. He just wants to make sure you guys are all in this the right document. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. It looks yeah. like they are. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So, in the annual financial report, so in Adobe or PDF, in the upper left-hand corner, it, it should tell you what page you're on out of forty-one. Mm -hmm. So. I'm going to use that kind of as your guide and you can either you can either page down or you can literally go up into the box that probably says one when you open it and you can type the number in there and it'll take you straight to the page that you want to go to. So um, with with that, we'll start out with the independent auditors report and it's on page three of 41. And the independent auditors report is on Sikich letterhead. Um, this is where we give our opinion on the financial statements. And in order for us to give an opinion on the financial statements, we're required to follow two sets of standards. The auditing standards that are issued by the American Institute for Certified Public Accountants or the AICPA. And those standards tell us the type of procedures we need to perform when we're conducting our audit. The second set of standards are the financial reporting standards. And that comes from the Governmental Accounting Standards Board or GASB. So GASB sets the rules for what this report needs to look like for local governments such as the library. Once we follow those two sets of standards, we can then give an opinion on the financial statements. We're pleased to present an unmodifi unmodified opinion, otherwise known as a clean opinion. And what that means is that the financial statements are presented fairly in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles free of material misstatement. And this is the highest level of opinion that you can receive on your financial statements. So all good news there. Um, the audit process actually takes several months. We were already working on the audit back in um, December um, and everything's a little different right during the pandemic. Um, so even, <clears throat> you know, even the audits being done remotely now, um, you know, we uh, try to try to manage that with, with you all, but um, it's everything's, everything's a little different. So we realized that adds a little a little stress to the uh, to the process that's already you know a little can be a little. There stuff. was a lot of scanning and copying of documents that I did. So yeah, and especially exactly. this year because I was without an admin assistant, so yeah. it was all me yeah. all the time. So we we greatly appreciate that, and we realized like <laughs> I think there was some delay, and it was totally on my part. But yeah, hopefully yeah. <laughs> all all things equal, you know, given what we're going through, you know, this is the same you know May board meeting I was at last year. So that's that's pretty darn good in my opinion. So 
Um, we're going to jump to the first audited financial statement, which is PDF page six. And the title at the top of that page is statement of net position. And this statement is, it's intended to be like a balance sheet, but it's, it's like a souped up balance sheet, if you will. This is more like what a balance sheet for a, for a corporation might be, because it adds your capital assets, um, like, your, like your land and your building. And it also adds what GASB um, defines as liabilities. So as you scroll down the page and that non-current liabilities, the liabilities that are reported there are those um, like net pension liabilities for IMRF, your MRF, um, that kind of thing. That's what's showing up in the non-current liabilities. Then we get down to net position and your capital assets are set apart from the unrestricted net position. It's a negative number because those pension liabilities are on there, but you only have this statement along with the statement on the next page in the annual audit because it's required for that unmodified opinion. And we'll get to the statements that make a little more sense in just a second. So if we go over to page seven, the statement of activities, this is that same kind of consolidated um, income statement. Um, your net position went down and that's really only because of the, um, the pension liabilities caused that, nothing to lose sleep over there. Um, so let's skip ahead to page eight, which is the balance sheet. This is the one that I think makes a little more sense because this will look similar to the reports that you get um, out of the accounting system on a monthly basis. So you've got your general fund and then your special reserve fund, right? You've got assets, liabilities, Gatsby's got this thing called deferred inflows. It's like a liability. We want to look at fund balance because fund balance is really the bottom line. Fund balance is the amount of reserves that you had to begin the fiscal year in, year that you're in now. And so your fund balance in your general fund was 1,791,000 and your fund balance in your special reserve fund was 439,000. So altogether, your total fund balance of 2,231,000. You go over to page 10. Page 10 is the revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balances. So we know what the end ending fund balance was. This statement's going to show us how that changed throughout the year. So your, your general fund had 3,565,000 3, in revenue. Uh, Special Reserve had 1,700 in interest income. That was the revenue there. And then you had 3,154,000 in expenditures, no expenditures to the special reserve during the year. So an increase of 410,578, that tells you you're structurally in balance. You can afford to provide the services that you're providing at the library with the revenue streams that you have coming in. Furthermore, you know that um, the only way to do big capital projects because without a referendum is to be saving money up in your, in your special reserve. Um, and so you, you do have 439,000 there. You did have a $14,000 transfer out of the general fund to the special reserve fund during the year. So overall you had an increase in fund balance of 396,000 um, in your general fund. Your, um, your fund balance in the general fund of 1,791,000, if you compare that to your expenditures of 3,154,000, you had over, over six months in reserves at the end of the year, maybe one way to, one way to look at that. Um, so that's a, that's a healthy fund balance position. Let's see, let's jump to um, the next page, page, or I'm sorry, page 12 of the PDF. There's a divider page there. So we're at the beginning of the notes to the financial statements. So you see the title summary of significant accounting policies. So the job of the notes to the financial statements to, is to provide more support to the numbers that we were just looking at on the, on the regular financial statements. Nothing to point out to you in particular on this note, just understanding that all the policies that are followed to formulate those statements are all um, captured in this uh, note number one. Jump ahead to um, page 18, um, note number two on deposits and investments, note 2A specifically, talks about custodial credit risk. Custodial credit risk is the risk that if the financial institution that you have deposits at, fifth third, were to go out of business, would you get your money back? And there's two ways to get your money back, $250,000 in FDIC insurance, but then fifth third pledges collateral 
So additional securities, those are safe kept at BNY Mellon. We confirmed that collateral with BNY Mellon and all of your deposits were fully um, insured and collateralized um, at December 31st. So um, that's good news. You're doing exactly what's required by your investment policy and only local governments can get that collateral. So it's good that you take advantage of it. We're gonna jump ahead past the notes to the financial statements. We'll come to a section called required supplementary information and page 35 of the PDF. Let me grab a drink real quick. Page 35 is the schedule of revenues, expenditures and changes in fund balance. For the general fund, same as what we saw up at the front of the report, except this has the budget numbers as well, and a little more detail for the expenditures. So we talked about the revenues being 3,565. Great job budgeting. Um, you, you beat your budget by 30,000. You always want to be conservative on those revenue budgets. And conservative on the expenditure side mean, means we would stay within our budgetary means. And you did just that, your actual expenditures were 3,154. So within your um, budgeted expenditures. And then the rest of the actual numbers are you know, what we saw at, at the front of the report. So the next page gets us into some information about the pension plan, right? So you're almost all of your, almost all of your active employees with the exception of a couple are in the Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund. It's just that legacy plan, which is the MRF um, that's, that's still paying benefits on some of the folks that are no longer at the library. So if you look at IMRF, employees in IMRF pay four and a half percent on each of their paychecks. And then the library pays the contribution rate set by the actuaries at IMRF. And you pay that over, you participate as part of the village's plan. So you pay that over to the village each each month, they in turn pay that money over to IMRF. So the budgetary impact for 2020 in the far right-hand column, 111,174, which was 8.45% of your covered payroll of 1,315,000. So it's a well-funded plan because you don't have a choice. You have to put the money in each and every month and you along with all the other employers in the state that participate are putting in their um, required amount. And another government's amount won't necessarily be 8.45. It could be higher, it could be lower. It all depends on you know, where their plan was at when the actuary did their report. The next page is then essentially the financial results for IMRF. And so it looks a little different um, because you might recall for those of you that um, heard this presentation last year, because you share in this IMRF plan with the village, the auditors for the village have to carve out and figure out how much of the liability is the libraries and how much is the villages. And they do that based on the, uh, on the covered payroll or the salaries of the village versus the library. So the first number in the far right hand column, that 24.58, that's to say that the library salaries in IMRF are 25% of the total, which means the village is 75%. And then based on carving it out that way, your net pension liability is 240,000 down from 405. And then that bottom number is what percent you are funded. So if you think about um, what percent have I set aside for my, um, my kids to go to college, that's one way to look at it. We're setting aside the money to pay pension benefits, right? And you're 90% funded up from 81.76. So very, very well-funded plan. Now this was through December 31st, 2019. The 2020 information came out since we finalized this and it was another good year with IMRF for 2020. So I'd imagine that 90% is probably even higher um, when we got to December 31st, 2020. On the next page, page 38, the MRF plan, if you will, um, your contribution was 166,000 exactly what the actuary recommended. Um, you know, based on covered payroll, obviously it's, it's, it's a very large number. Um, you're essentially paying for the benefits that are being paid out of that plan um, currently for former um, employees. Page after that would be 39 of the PDF. 
and this is the results for the, uh, the MRF plan. So total pension liability less the fiduciary net position, which is assets at market value equals your net pension liability. So we know that net pension liability for IMRF was like 232,000. So your total pension liability for the MRF plan, that first double underscore is 2,791 down from you know five years ago when you had some um, significant payouts in 2016. So 2,791, the activity, if you will, um, shows up in the plan fiduciary net position. The benefits that are being paid out is about $200,000 a year um, for those retirees. So the assets that were set aside is 638,000. So your net pension liability is the 2,153. So this plan's 22.9% you know, funded. It was you know, down to about 17% funded three years ago. So you're doing exactly what, you know, what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and uh, so there's, there's still obviously, uh, you know, payments that, that continue um, for the retirees that were in this plan. Those are the, um, excuse me for a second. Um, those are the highlights of, of this report. Um, be happy to answer any questions that you might have. I know I went through a lot of stuff really fast. So um, well, keep, keep, keep thinking if you, if you have questions, I'm gonna leave this document open. Let's go to the second document that you had, which would say 20 CYO final board com dash VOMG library. So this is titled the auditor's communication to the board of trustees. And the purpose of this document is to communicate all of our required communications to the board from those auditing standards we talked about at the very beginning. And then also if there's any recommendations for improvement, um, we include those um, in this document as well. So two purposes. So let's, let's go to the required communication. Up at the top, you should see that there's 17 pages. We're gonna to go to um, four of 17. It'll be on Sickage letterhead. It'll be addressed to the board. We'll say we've audited the financial statements. So if you go down to like the second paragraph, um, there's a discussion about um, in the middle of that paragraph, no new accounting policies were adapted during the year with the exception of GASB 95. GASB 95 was essentially a standard that allowed you to postpone the implementation of a few standards. Specifically, um, there's a lease standard um, that we're, we still want to get some more information from GASB on how to implement that standard. I don't think it's going to be a big deal, but we did take advantage of, of extending that standard implementation. Um, that extension um, goes and uh, you don't have to implement the standard until December of two, December 31st, 2022 audit. I'm sorry, Brian, did you say that there's um, the standard has to do with leasing, like this leased property? Yeah, so anything from like an operating lease for a copier mm -hmm. to let's say you did, um, let's say you, let's say you. I'm, I'm I mean, we lease like the parking spots behind the library and stuff like that, things like that. That would count as well, both revenue side and expense side. Okay. So we, um, it just the a capital lease would be um let's say let's say that you bought a bookmobile mm -hmm. i'm trying to think of a good a good right. stock example and let's say that you were going to make payments like you do a car payment over say five years but mm -hmm. at the end of the lease you own the bookmobile that's a capital lease an operating lease like for a copier is when right. it's done, we give you the copier back. And what usually happens, you just get a new copier, but um, that's an operating lease. And Gatsby changed the, how we have to account for those leases. And it's a little cumbersome, it's a little clunky, and we need a little more guidance on the types of leases that we can exclude right. from having to implement this clunky standard. Great. Thank so that's, that's, that's it in a nutshell. Um, next paragraph talks about estimates. When we say your IMRF plan is 90% funded, that's based on all the estimates that the actuary had in their report. When we say MRF is 20 some percent funded, that's based on all the assumptions that they're making. So this is just saying, hey, be careful. There's estimates in your financial statements. Um, 
Cash is not an estimate. We know how much cash you had in the bank, but your estimated liability is, is an estimate for those, those pension plans. The next page, page five, um, the first heading there, difficulties. We didn't have any difficulties with the audit. There's two paragraphs down for that. We didn't have any disagreements with management. Um, these are required communications. If we had problems during the audit, you would have known about it you know, well before um, this evening. That middle paragraph there, corrected and uncorrected misstatements. So the standard setters for on the auditing side from the AICPA set a really high bar for the library and for all units being audited. And they basically assume that every local government has like, you know, rocket scientists, accountants that can get all of their entries correct at the end of the year and that you can prepare your own financial statements. So when we have adjustments to the financial statements, the standards essentially require us to give you a, a management letter comment saying you didn't record everything. Well, as Pam did a good job replying and saying, we knew we couldn't record everything because the we were in transition with staff. We actually, you know, you know, needed help with some of those things. So it was fully anticipated. So that I, I wanted to frame that properly for you all to understand that there's not a lot of libraries that have the staff that could do all of those year end adjustments from a cash basis to an accrual basis and prepare the financial statements. So it's not, um, it's not uncommon at all that you'd have a, a suggestion or a recommendation saying, oh, you need to learn how to do all your accruals. Absolutely, we're here to help with that. But it's just our required you know, communication um, in the document. And we'll come to that recommendation later. I just wanna make sure y'all understood that. So when we jump over to page um, seven, you'll see um, a handful of journal entries that go into you know, page seven and eight. And none of those relate to cash or investments or anything like that. They're all these year end accruals. And the reason I point that out is because your financial statements that you're receiving throughout the year at board meetings that you're using to make decisions on, you're relying on that those cash balances are accurate, budget versus actual information is accurate. And there's nothing to suggest that based on our audit that you, you were getting good information because we didn't have any adjustments um, to those cash balances. So that's really good news. You can, because you're obviously making decisions at board meetings throughout the year based on, do we have the budget for it? Do we have the money for it? And then making decisions accordingly. So that's what those couple pages are. Jump over to page 12. And Gatsby's really busy. Like I said, there, there's all kinds of new standards. The only one that may impact you is this lease standard I was talking about. You can see that effective date of um, your year ended December 31st, 2022. All the other, other standards really don't affect any of our library or library district clients um, at all. So there were no new recommendations this year. They'd be on this page if there were. If you, if you go to page 14, these are the comments um, from last year. Um, one comment on page 12 and then um, one comment on page 13. And um, there's really good responses um, that Pam put together on those. Like I said, nothing, nothing to lose sleep about on these things. Um, you know, credit cards are a, a very sensitive area with lots of lots of governments. So we're always doing our testing there and, and always going to do our best to give you give you recommendations um, on on things like that. Um, and like I said, then the, the comment on page 15 um, about the year end close process, you know, it just like I said, the bar is set really high. So nothing to lose sleep about. Um, I'd say in conclusion, you know, like I said before, obviously everything's on time. I thought the audit went smoothly, albeit it was a lot of work for Pam to, to get all the documents to us electronically. Hopefully next year um, we'll be back to some semblance of, of normalcy if we can get all the kids back in school in the fall and then, and then businesses can start, like ours can start getting back to normal um, back out in person as well. Um, but district staffs, you know, you know, Pam takes the lead on everything, but everybody's 
you know, super friendly and, and professional and easy to work with. Um, those are the, the kind of the highlights I have for you tonight. But I'm, like I said, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Does anyone have any questions? I, I, no, I don't. We're trying to do some more, you know, like save things electronically as well. So hopefully in the future, if we do have to, to yep. you know, rely on that, that'll be easier to do. That'll be less of that kind of copying and scanning and stuff. So we are right. trying to make some of those changes as well. Perfect. Well, Brian, that was a very um, reassuring report from you. So thank you for that. Oh, you're very welcome. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Enjoy working with you all. I think we're good. All right. Well, if any, anyone was afraid to ask a question tonight, they can always ask Pam and uh, Ford it my way, and we're happy to, we're happy to get answers back to you. Yep. Awesome. All right. Great. Thanks, Brian. You're welcome. Good to see you. Nice to see you. And uh, hopefully next year it'll be in person. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> yeah. All right. Stay Thank safe, you. everyone. Thanks, Brian. Have a good night. Um, all right. Bye bye. He always does such a good job illuminating, you know, things that could be kind of a. <laughs> yeah, I think well, when you first look at it, too, it can be a little overwhelming. And so yeah. I like that he breaks it down that way. I mean, even, you know, I'm dealing with the budget all the time, but not, you know, some of the liabilities and some all of that kind of thing can be really confusing. So um, it's always <laughs> worthwhile to have. The way he explains it, it's easy to, to digest. Yeah. It, it seems so simple and straightforward because he knows what he's talking mm -hmm. about. So it's great to hear him say that. Yep. Okay, do you want to go back up to approving yeah. the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve regular board meeting minutes from April 8th, 2021. I'll second it. Thank you. Anybody have anything that they needed to correct on it. It looked good to me when I read it through. No, it looks good. Both of them. Okay, then we will vote on approving those. Uh, hi, Eric. We'll start with you. Monzone? Yes. Thank you. Hello, Tier. Yes. Puzo? Yes. Jost? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the special board meeting minutes from April 21st, 2021. That was our walkthrough. I'll second that. Thank you, Lima. That was pretty straightforward since there wasn't a lot of discussion. <laughs> you know, that was documented thoroughly. Okay, so um, Pelletier, yes. Puzo? Yes. Jost? Yes. Thank you. Gonzalez? Yes. Monzone? Sorry, did you say anything, Eric? I said yes. Okay. You're very soft tonight. I couldn't hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, moving on to public comments, agenda items only. There is not any public tonight. I do not have a report nor Emily told me anything. She probably didn't know I'd be filling in for her. So we can move on to committee reports, finance. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the financial um, reports for April, 2021. I'll second. Thank you, Eric. Um, I have the, the first thing I have is the cash statement. So should we just start with that? Is that is anybody everyone has that? Because I I they all have everyone has the same order of reports okay. for this. Okay. Yeah. You know, wonderful. Are there any questions on that? No. Um the income state <clears throat> income statement 
Wait a minute. So we're getting a lot of money from the taxes. Any questions on that? So I just want to point out that, um, especially now that we're kind of in the middle of the renovation stuff, that usually under the annual budget, under revenues, that will be our actual annual budget. But because we are doing the renovation, that that 12, that $1.2 million that we're either getting from the loan and the transfer in is the special reserve money. So that's actually included. It's like extra in the annual budget. And that reflects that resolution we passed, I think, two months ago, amending the budget. So just wanted to point that out in case anyone had questions. It kind of threw me at first. I'm like, wait a second. So, so the bank loan is eight hundred thousand, correct? But we haven't even gone into that yet. Correct. We have that. It, it, it the line of credit has the the maximum allowed is eight hundred thousand, but we have not started drawing down on that yet. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, what's next here? Hold on a minute. Check register, any questions? Yes. Do you know why we paid for check number 5167 Lincolnwood Library $1,000? Um, that is for a joint program that we're doing. Oh, okay. Cool. Them. So I think it's us, Lincolnwood, and there's like three or four other libraries. I think it's an author visit, but it's, oh. a, it's a joint program. Is it that book? one that they're doing like as a precursor for I believe so yeah the the midnight library one I think it was yeah. for that oh okay got it cool yeah thank you anything else no um That's it. Okay, we can vote on the financial report from April. Uh, who's so? Yes. Thank you. Jost? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. Lundzone? Yes. Pelletier? Yes. Thank you. All right, facilities, do you wanna wait for unfinished business to talk yeah. about another? Mm -hmm. It's fine, I'll wait. And then policy. There's Maybe. nothing nothing new to report. Okay. All right, director report. Um, you can look, does anyone have any questions about my written report uh, this month? Lots of uh, renovation stuff and getting back to normal as much as we can. Um, I do want to say um, Suzanne is here this evening. Um, Carlotta's met her or talked to her a few times. I know a number of you met her when we did the walkthrough as well. Um, she has jumped right in and um, really has started organizing some of the files. She started doing the um, weekly invoice paying. So that's great again to have that done on a weekly basis. So. Um, she's already been a great help to me and I'm, I'm looking forward to, to getting things a little bit more organized. So um, yeah, I think it's just really nice to have someone in that position again. And, and, and Suzanne has been a welcome addition to the staff in general. So well, they don't, again. pardon? I said, welcome again. Yes. Yes. We're, we're happy to have her here. So does anyone have any questions on my report or any of the staff reports that I can answer? Um, when are you thinking to uh, do the new walkthrough in June, like beginning or end? I'm just curious because we, you know, if anybody needs to schedule vacations or time out of town. So um, I was going to talk about this later on, but I was hoping that we could schedule a special board meeting um, prior to the regular board meeting. So um, meet at five on the same day as the regular board meeting and do that in person. Um, we can set up tables. I mean, 
things are changing really fast with the mask mandate and all this other stuff. It's freaking me out. I'm like, I do not want to be a director during the pandemic anymore. I'm like, oh my God, just stop. Um, but um, so we were thinking that um, if you came in early that night, that way you wouldn't have to, um, you know, find another night that everyone's free. Um, if we can do it at five, because that's a little bit easier for Jason to stay because he's usually here about six or 6.30. So if he doesn't have to stay till seven, that would be good. Um, and then we can, um, we'll, we'll do the special meeting as the walkthrough and then have our regular meeting in person on that night. And we'll set up tables actually in the lower level because at the June meeting, we don't anticipate that any of the spaces that we have crammed full of furniture and other things um, will be empty yet, but we can set up tables downstairs in the lower level. So that's what I was thinking. Yeah, so that, that makes sense. sense, right? Is that June 10th? Um, yeah. Regular, the next regular meeting. Yeah. Yes. So we're saying we're gonna have it at five. Yeah, okay. so that would be my preference if that works for at least the board members that are here. Fine with me. It's fine with me as well. Sorry, June 10th, you said? Yes. Yeah, isn't that the second? Yeah, it's our regular it's it's our regular board meeting night, but it would the special meeting would be at five and our regular meeting would be at seven and they would both be in person. Okay. I would have to reschedule a couple of patients so I could be there by five, but I will let you know. Okay. And that would just be the walkthrough. I mean, the other thing too is that um, you know, it doesn't mean that anyone that couldn't come to the special meeting couldn't walk around the space because we'll be meeting down there. Um but you know that would be when Jason would be here and potentially um, one of the architects as well. So I mean, you know, if you can't, it's not. I'll try. Yeah, but I'll send out an email so that everyone sees it because I know we're missing a couple of people tonight just to make sure that that's okay. Um, but I had spoken with Jason last week, I think, and we were trying to set a good date that you know there would be enough stuff done to really give you you know, a, a great sense of what's going on. It's crazy down there right now. I mean, the walls are painted, they're putting in tile in the bathrooms. I, I know we're jumping the gun a little bit, but I'll talk more about that. So, um, but I will send out an email about the June 10th special meeting um, after we're done here. Okay. Any other questions about anything in my report or any of the manager's reports? No, no. Okay, moving on to unfinished business, the Open Meetings Act compliance. I'm just keeping that on there. Um, so uh, I will probably work with Suzanne sometime in the next few weeks about that. And then hopefully we can do that at our June meeting or at the latest, it would be our July meeting. But I just want to keep it on the, on the agenda so that we don't forget that we need to do it. Perfect. Okay, so we should look at the SMC pay packet for April. Yep. That. Let me open up. So I think last month you might have seen the pay packet before it had been signed off by the architects, but this is the one that both SMC and the architects have both signed off on this now. So um, So is this the one that is 210,624? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure I'm looking at the right number. Okay. I will make now, a motion. Oh, sorry. Do you have questions? Pam, Pam, is this, I just signed a check today. Is that the right. check signed today is for this, these payments, correct? Correct. So, okay. yeah. So I had, I, I, you signed the check, but obviously if the board wouldn't approve this, we wouldn't send it. But um, oh, right. so yeah, it's, it's just a matter of the timing of writing the checks and when you come in to sign it, that's all. all right. We did that last month, but it was just, yeah. just wanted to make sure, sure it was the uh, one I signed today. Okay. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the SMC pay packet for April in the amount of $210,624.28. I'll second. Thank you, Emma. 
Okay. Jost? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. Munzone? Yes. Pelletier, yes. Puzo? Yes. Thank you. Okay, going, circling back around to possibly a June 10th meeting. Is that all we need to say about that? Pam, you're muted. Sorry, um, I'll send out an email just to make sure that it works for everyone and so you can get it on your calendars um, if, you know, if you can and then. Okay, sorry, my computer, the internet is lagging. So if I freeze, it's lovely being home. <laughs> okay, moving on to new business. Did you get, you didn't get the- We have not yet gotten the certified oaths of office. So hopefully we'll get those before the June meeting and then we would swear um, everyone in at that meeting. And if we can do it in person, that would be good too. So we wouldn't have to do it okay. virtually. So, cause there's been lots of discussion on the director of listserv, whether or not we can, we can swear people in virtually. And some libraries are like, yes, we've been doing this all along. And others are going, no, you know, they've had to come in and you know, the, I don't know. So anyway, if we can do it in person that will minimize that whole discussion so excellent and I think that they usually come the last few times the last couple times we've had elections they've usually come I'll probably get them next week it always seems like they come the week after our meeting but right we should have them by June okay were there I didn't see any communications this month no before. I think I'm trying to because we get so many of them online now so I've tried to forward them as I get them and okay. um on the stats graphic that Karina puts together, she usually tries to put a comment or two, but so I've been trying to send them to you as I get them. Okay. And then still no public to have comments. All right, anything else? No, I, unless anyone has any questions for me, like about the renovation, like I said, there it's a mess down there right now, but um, things are really moving quickly. Um, tile in the bathrooms. Um, most of the spaces have at least the first coat of, well, they have one coat of paint on many of the spaces. Um, they're working on and putting in the ceiling grid for the lighting. Um, it's gonna look really amazing and fantastic. <laughs> so I'm just super excited for you guys to see it. And yeah, I mean, obviously if anyone wants to walk through it before the hand, just let me know and we can arrange that. But um, I've been enjoying the uh, photos on Facebook and Instagram that you guys are posting. So yeah. So we're trying to get like good kind of shots that we can compare to before shots and stuff. So um, yeah, it's, it's really, it's, it's going to be awesome. It's just going to be so exciting. So anyway, <laughs> very cool. but that's all I got. I have nothing. Else. Okay. Well then we can adjourn at 7.43. Okay. Last one. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.